other side of it on the complete opposite side of um <laughs> hoping somebody family is better on it um brendan shaw and brian kind of fine kid have been you know the test positive for coronavirus should we be surprised probably not right i just think about it now uh bolsonaro right the president of brazil was recently tested positive obviously boris johnson our prime minister here in the uk didn't really treat it seriously and was bragging about going around touching people he got tested positive and these two comedians these two doofuses who were essentially part of the original crew of naysayers when it came to covid who were you know poo-pooing it saying it wasn't a real thing saying people were overreacting brendan shaw telling us about it. he was a stats guy and he was a numbers guy and it doesn't really matter who cares blah 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 now look at them they've both got it and part of me you know part of you'd be forgiven you'd be you know forgiven to be you know kind of punch in the air now i'm celebrating the fact that they both got it i don't think anybody would begrudge you for it. I, mean, I don't think even brian callen the most sensible of the two would probably uh, begrudge you for feeling that way but it's just such an unfortunate situation right the fact that they all went together to go and perform i think in san antonio texas and they came back on the monday who were positive for corona and they've been so blase so flipping about the whole issue it just really makes you just kind of question your um question your optimism for humanity right because i think in the beginning when i sort of mentioned it about some of the protests or some of the people that were freaking out about having to wear a mask in a target or whatever right i was like you know what i'm okay with you if you're like look i've looked at the numbers if you have this position where you look at the numbers you're like hey it's only affecting a certain group of the pop it's only affecting a certain segment of the population um you sort of say, you know, um, if you get it and you're under this age, you're going to be okay, blah, 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 blah. You come to a, some sort of um, informed decision about how you're going to live your life. That's okay. But to be weefully, to be so wrong and loud, which is what you see a lot of Brendan, right? He's kind of encapsulated that idea about shouting things and saying things loudly, repeating things again and again to make himself feel like he's correct. And then to somehow then turned back around now right and i think he said it recently in the recent podcast that oh he if he would have known that having if he would have known pursuing you know going on tour and pushing to kind of go out and perform in front of live crowds that it would essentially put in a position where he was unable to see his family for two weeks he would have done it and it's like what <laughs> did you honestly not know that when you were ranting and raving on the rogan podcast when you were talking all that nonsense on yours and essentially calling people that were being precaution being you know i remember there was an episode of fighting a kid where i think cat was wearing a mask and she kind of lied and said that she, she was because her face was cold and brenda sort of gave us look like oh are you one of those idiots that wears a mask and it's like bloody hell these people are insane in it like they don't want they don't want it to be real fair enough but it is but then they, they act as if it's not and then when it is they act surprised it's like bloody hell bloody hell so yeah this is just crazy news really yeah but obviously it was broken by brendan himself on social and he went about doing it you know the the most brendan short way possible right he gets he, he announced he's got it via twitter in a kind of jokey way to sort of take off the shine of it which isn't jokey because you know he was a he was an ardent critic of being a critic of a virus is super strange anyway to be honest isn't it right it's not some sort of um intellectual battle right you're not being some sort of a rational thinker or critical thinker in that respect you're just being a bit of an idiot but he announces it on social this is from bloody elbow ben shaw deletes posts of him taking a bike ride while covid19 positive yes you got that right he announced it on social media then posted on social that he was all going on a bike ride an absolute doofus um so it says here brendan shaw who has constantly downplayed the seriousness of the pandemic for months announced that he and his other colleagues have tested positive for covid19 the former ufc fighter says he has still has symptoms such as a lack of taste but he took a IVs for three days and straight and started to feel better <coughs> which is already you know ridiculous in, this, in itself right the fact that this sort of anecdotal evidence is anything insightful we don't really give a shit the fact that you know from everyone with any sort of brain knows part of the reason why you're staying indoors and you're quarantining yourself is so that you don't end up spreading it to people that are more at risk than you are right no one really cares about your if you want to take the risk you know you're on on, on yourself and go out there and perform in front of people fair enough but don't go out there and perform in front of people get positive and then spread it to people who are going to necessarily spread it to others who are more at risk than yourself so just to, to essentially be out there boasting about the the aspect of being able to get ivs right which is a privilege in itself right if ever there was an expression of white privilege this is it and then to sort of <coughs> be 
I don't know how you call it. This is like being completely dismissive of his friends, right? I think one of one of these friends, Stevie Blue Eyes, it's been kind of let be known that he is a he was a cancer survivor prior prior right in his prior life to comedy. Um, so you'd imagine his immune system is somewhat compromised. So to have this virus ravaging all over his body, it probably isn't the best of situations. So imagine your friends putting you in that situation, right? You're where well, you're already immune compromised, and you're putting yourself in a position where you can get a virus, and your friend is telling you, "Hey, at least I'm okay after three days." God Almighty! It continues. Here. It says. He didn't experience any of the intense symptoms that other people have and now feels vindicated that his views on the pandemic are right. He says he's curious to see how long this uh, corona fear is going to keep going, right? As if it's like it's a, I don't know, as if it's like, um, I don't know, as if it's some sort of made up fear, like, you know, there's these ISIS terrorists, sleeper cells in our country just waiting to activate any moment. It's just like, no, this is not it. This is a real thing. He continues, it says, um, um, I sure did, Brian. Shops responded after being asked by Curse if you're on the bike ride. He said, I did 15 miles today, right? And he posted this picture, you know, gloating, arrogant, you know, 20 mile, co 20 mile corona ride, thick boy bike club. Got that little stupid smirk, smirk in his face, which I'm assuming he did partly in response to the fact that he was getting a lot of stick online. You know, he's the first person to tell you he doesn't read comments and he doesn't engage online, but he does. He's on it all the time. So he probably felt as if people were getting at him too much. The fact that he was, he went. You know, he was the naysayer. He was doubting his severity and went out there, went on tour, did provide to perform in front of crowds, did meet and greets, hugged strangers. And then he goes out on a bike ride to sort of like as a middle finger to all the naysayers and like, no, everything's okay after three days. It's like, we don't care if you feel okay. Other people might not feel okay later. Just stay your house at home for the 14 days that you're required. And then if you decide to go on for a four mile bike ride or you decide to go and perform in front of people again somewhere, do as you please. But for that two week period, just, you know, put yourself to one side and sort of, you know, allow. Yeah. Don't be so selfish, I guess, in that regard, isn't it? That's what you'd hope, but it doesn't happen that way. Um, it said I sure did. Uh, let's continue here. It says, um, bah, bah, bah. online bike rides have grown more in popular home workout recently during lockdowns, but that doesn't seem to what your show did. The UFC veteran seems to have broken quarantine and went on an actual bike ride while he was contagious and positive for the virus. Madness. Shaw took the social media to post his corona ride, which shows him outdoors without a mask, and this time claimed that he did 20 miles on his bike. The post has since been deleted, but the screenshots I've seen below, courtesy of a Reddit user like god almighty imagine the kind of the level of contempt this guy must have for just humans in general his fan base his own family and then the funny bit about this is that obviously in this in you know the recent episode he then goes on to say what did he say let me see if i can find the clip where he says that he regret he didn't know right let's see if i can find it so this is i think this is after post posting you know or after he got confirmed it was a positive test Get, then goes on to say this. Let me see if I can get out for you. Da, 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 da. Where essentially I think Callan essentially kind of admits they were idiots, and Brendan kind of refuses to say say as much. Hopefully, it loads up. Boom, boom, boom. Come on, let's get this computer loading. Bear, bear me one second. Is it going to load? Nope. There to be go. fair, what else is there to do? To be fair, what else is there to do now? Hello. No, you're right. You're right. I'm I'm saying that the women in my family tend to, like, they're, they're, my mother's telling me I should be checking my blood oxygen level, and uh, I could fall off a cliff on the week two because a lot of men, she knows four men that fell off a cliff on the week two because a lot of men, she knows four men that fell off a cliff. They were fine and boom, and so she's worried about me. And I'm like, all right. Fell off and like they died or they just got worse. Now you get worse. You get worse. So. Yeah. How about how about I told my dad? You know, I finally told him, and he, I tell him, I go, Dad, I'm, I actually have pretty mild symptoms. Not a big of a deal. And then pause for about five seconds. And he goes, Yeah. It's like, Come on. Man. That's fair. It's like people want you. Know. It's like people want you to have worse symptoms. Yeah, we do. Possibly you, bro, Brendan, specifically. We do want you to have worse symptoms. We do. We actually do. Some people are actually wishing for your death, which is, you know, a bit too far for me in my experience. But some people do want you to see you on an, <laughs> on a, on a bed somewhere stretched out, covered in, you know, medical gowns. Some people do want to see that, unfortunately. When you're that much of an idiot when it comes to this virus that's killing people, it's a natural reaction. 
It's like, what's wrong with people? A lot of people wish we were way sicker, and I don't blame them, because we've been talking a big fucking game like exactly. idiots. We've been fucking like, blah, 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 blah about COVID. Now both of us have it. I'm fucked up. I deserve it. You, the, I wasn't careful. Here's the thing. I don't know how. By the way, you know how we got it. I'm telling you how we got it. You can say whatever you want. And and this is where Brendan's lack of humility shows, right? Brendan, Cam's going to go on an entire diatribe about why he thinks they got it, why they're responsible for him. Look at Brendan's face for the entire thing. When we're coming off stage, first of all, it didn't help that the... We shared fucking, a mic, too. We shared a mic. It's not that. I'm, I'm going to tell you what it is, because we all came in there negative. What happened was we happened to have gone to the one county that was the hot spot in the United States. We got an Amber Alert on our phone Saturday. Well, show's got to go on. on. Stage, we got an Amber Alert. I mean, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's crazy. Because remember, when we got there Thursday, despite, well, I read, I think it was Friday, that sp- cases had spiked in Arizona and Texas. So I was like, oh, you know, but we were already there. And so we were in the hot spot in San Antonio, and we were on stage with 350 people, whatever who were laughing in our direction. Mm-hmm. And so that's an aerosol. Mm-hmm. And then when we got off stage because of the way a, uh, LOL- They were killing so hard. That's why they got it basically, right? If you're not you know, kind of currently following along, they were killing, that's why they got it. Because people were laughing so hard and the room was so packed, they were bound to get it. Problem is we had to walk through the entire crowd. People are standing up and they're, they're, they're you know, I'm talking good. to you, Ryan, Brennan, and they're laughing and they're saying, t- so you're getting all of that spittle Yep. That's what happens. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, I mean, they, they, there's, so aside from being in a hazmat suit, that was going to happen. Mm-hmm. The, 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 the larger issue is, you know, should we have gone in the first place? But I, again, I say, well, the, board of, Edu- the board of Health and the state and the club okayed that. They okayed it. In I fact... Would... So let's just for a minute imagine what their finances must be like for them to decide to take that risk, though, right? Just imagine what it must be like. Just that's the thing that's worrying about. I think unless you're like a Rogan, you know, you got two hundred mil approximately or allegedly from Spotify. But for the most part, most of these guys are doing pretty well via the podcast they put on YouTube, right? From the AdSense, from the sponsors they get. It's not a bad occupation for most of them. So to put yourself at risk and your family at risk to go back on road must really make you think what their monthly nut must be. And it must be high. And if ever and if any if ever there must be a this is probably a a good a sort of good cautionary tale in terms of how to in making sure you keep your nut low make sure you keep your monthly expenditure as low as you can do even if you're making money hand over fist because there's going to come a point where you're going to need to make that really difficult decision about whether you go out and earn some money hoping in the hopes you know until you go yeah you're gonna have to make the decision of whether or not you should go out put your life at risk to earn money you know to kind of keep your family fed and sheltered or whether you put yourself in a position where you don't need to do that and you've got a bit of savings or something you know in the bank that you can sort of dip into whilst everyone's kind of under lock and key but for somebody for people in their position they don't have to work in an office they're not working for a corporation they're essentially doing it you know on their own dime they have their own timetable their own studio to be in a position where you have to go out and tour you have to go and perform in front of live state in live crowds probably does show how maybe not irresponsible they've been with their money but just how so probably what's that word called when you they just assumed that the good times are going to keep rolling on right i think someone mentioned it previously like how people sometimes think brendan sort of has this idea that he's going to keep getting richer as time goes on and i think people maybe he has the he has, he's, he's well <clears throat> maybe you have the right to think that right if especially if you've done as well as brendan does considering his lack of you know acumen and his lack of awareness and everything of himself the fact that he's got this far in his career is really amazing in that way shape or form so maybe he has every right to believe that he is going to just get exponentially richer as time goes on but that's a really a a naive assumption to make isn't it especially under the current climate who's to say things will return back to normal who like as we've proven with the other clip i showed you before of the pubs reopening the pubs are reopened but people don't want to go so to assume that you're suddenly going to be able to tour again the same level when things reopen is just ridiculous anyway right it might mean you might have to be on road more because there's less capacity so you might have to make you might have to do two shows to pay that we're going to pay you the same shows that would have paid you 
50,000, you might have to do two of them or three of them to kind of make up that same amount. So it's a really bizarre situation to be in. Just looking at it from the outside and again, don't know anything about their finances, nothing what's going on, but you'd expect two successful podcasters who've been at it for a long time, associated with Rogan. You know, there's already a bit of a bump there, a bit of, you know, you get a bit of a rub being standing next to that guy to be in a position where they have to go out on tour, have to put their families at risk, have to put their own health at risk. It's just insane. <clears throat> Act, I mean, if I could to the point it. where we weren't even restricted. We, I think we had... Hmm. We were allowed to be more than 75% of capacity. Yeah, I know. I mean, so if I could redo it, I wouldn't have gone. So. I'm me too. I've been humble. Again, well, I apologize. I'm... I understand. We have to be, everybody has to be late now, isn't careful. It? Listen to us talking now. You gotta, you just, if you've been exposed, you just gotta be more careful. <laughs> I guess anyone that was listening to these guys, you know, when it came to Corona, you've probably, you know, and, and imagine the people that went to their shows how dumb they must feel, right? Of all the shows to kind of, you know, we saw that. Do you remember when you saw the Dave Chappelle comedy special and you're like, wow, I wish I was in that crowd. Would you have really felt the same thing about being in the Brendan Show and Brian Cullen audience? No disrespect to those guys, but is that really the show that you want to go to to break quarantine? And it makes you think just how detached they must be from their circle of friends. Because I remember watching a few episodes of other people's podcasts, right, in the comedy scene. And they were all quite hesitant about going out. They didn't want to be the person that was going out first and that was going to essentially get it or have a member of the audience get it, right? No one wanted that press because, you know, everyone can say what they want about all, you know, all bad press. And there's no such thing as bad press. But in this instance, what's going on in the world at the moment, having, you know, putting your fans or your supporters at risk and essentially uh, spreading it unbeknownst to you is probably not the best look you will probably get cancelled it's unlikely they will get cancelled because again i think you know if you're self-sufficient and you have 1000 true fans and you've got some cash reserve you should be okay but you're, you're probably going to put yourself in a lot of bother you're probably going to you know test your agency's desire to represent you in that regard so yeah just a very very bizarre situation now we learn of course the development that is that chin the other dude has got has been has probably got covid as well he said he's been feeling a bit ill um there's no know who else they've probably have knowingly spread it to and it's just a complete and utter shit show and again i just think um it's probably a cautionary tale for the djs in the scene as well right outside of the comedy circle in the scene that i'm most associated with the yeah, nightlife industry you just need to be able to if you're going to go somewhere to go perform make sure it's somewhere where it's covid safe don't go somewhere where it's sort of like ramping up and it's going a bit crazy because god damn it man they've sort of set themselves back now and you know la is gonna probably ramp up the restrictions and stuff but bloody hell what a shitty situation for everybody involved